In this video, we'll discuss the abnormalities in the two parts of the ventilation perfusion ratios. That is the abnormalities in the ventilation and the abnormalities in the perfusion. They are shunt and dead space. The gas exchange critically depends on proper matching of ventilation and perfusion. Alteration in VQ ratio causes hypoxemia. So what's shunt? In shunt, there is airway obstruction, no ventilation and no gas exchange. So VQ ratio goes to zero. In shunt perfusion is present, blood bypasses the alveoli without gas exchange. Due to decreased gas exchange or no gas exchange, PO2 is lowest and PCO2 is highest. So what happens in shunt? The deoxygenated blood combines with the oxygenated blood. Now what's the level of PO2 and PCO2? PO2 and PCO2 in shunt are that of venous side of the blood. That is PO2 is 40 and PCO2 is 46 millimeters of mercury and there is an increase in alveolar and arterial gradient that is there is an increase in the difference between alveolar and arterial pressures what's the effect of respiratory rate on ventilation alveolar ventilation decreases with increase in respiratory rate with increase in respiratory rate tidal volume goes down so if tidal volume is 250 minus dead space 150 and multiply by the increase in rate say for example example 25 then it's 250 minus 150 is 100 times 25 that is 2.5 liters so the condition that causes shunts are atelectasis copd pneumonia pneumothorax and neurovascular disorders and what happens in dead space in dead space there is obstruction to the blood flow there is no perfusion no gas exchange so vq ratio goes to infinity so what about the po2 and pco2 in dead space po2 and pco2 in dead that space are dot of inspired air that is PO2 is 150 millimeters of mercury and PCO2 is zero and what are the examples of that space pulmonary embolism pulmonary infarction shock cardiogenic shock and core pulmonary what are the condition in which there is no perfusion no perfusion may be due to pulmonary embolism vascular obstruction and emphysema and low perfusion may be due to low cardiac output pulmonary vascular injuries and extra vascular compressions what if ventilation goes to one lung and perfusion to the other lung if ventilation goes to one lung and perfusion to the other vq will be normal but patient will die how pulmonary artery handles blood coming from heart and what factors affect pulmonary blood flow pulmonary blood vessels receive five liters of blood per minute from right ventricle five liter is the cardiac output pressure in the systemic circulation is 95 millimeters of mercury whereas pressure in the pulmonary artery is 25 by 10 with a mean of 15 millimeters of mercury and the main pulmonary artery is only 30 percent as thick as a aorta so how pulmonary circulation maintains that high pressure pulmonary vasculature is thin walled and is of low pressure and pulmonary capillaries are large so that each alveolus lie in a bed of capillaries at any one time one liter of blood is present in the pulmonary circuit and less than 100 ml is present in the capillaries in exercise pulmonary circulation increases by several fold just like systemic circulation but pressure remains normal What's the ratio of alveolar ventilation to pulmonary flow? Alveolar ventilation is 4.2 liters and pulmonary flow is 5.5 liters. So the ratio is 0.8. But this ratio may be normal in severe hypoxia. What are the factors that affect the pulmonary vasculature? Unlike other tissue, hypoxia causes vasoconstriction in the lung. And what's the advantage of this? This redirects blood to ventilated areas so low oxygen and the alveoli decreases the perfusion number two increased carbon dioxide decreases the ph and causes vasoconstriction as opposed to vasodilatation in other tissues number three decreased blood flow to alveoli leads to bronchial constriction shifting the ventilation away from the poorly perfused areas what's the effect of sympathetic and parasympathetic stimulation on ventilation perfusion ratio sympathetic activity causes vasoconstriction and bronchodilatation so it increases the ventilation and decreases the perfusion of blood flow pulmonary arterioles are constricted by adrenaline noradrenaline angiotensin and some prostaglandins so stimulation of cervical sympathetic ganglia causes pulmonary vasoconstriction and decreased blood
blood supply, whereas vagus nerve, the parasympathetic supply, causes bronchoconstriction or decreased ventilation, and beta-2 adrenergic receptors and noradrenaline cause bronchodilatation or increased ventilation. High alveolar pressure compresses the capillaries that reduces the blood flow also.